We left off in the last video in the Archean Eon, and where Arche comes from ancient Greek, it means beginning or origin. And it's the eon in which either life first started to exist, or at least it first started to somewhat flourish. It's possible that maybe life first started to exist at the end of the Hadean Eon. And of course, this boundary is, of, is, is vague. And the Archean Eon is also the first eon where we still have rocks from that time. So we are able to find rocks that we can date to be roughly 3.8 billion years. Now the other really interesting thing that happened in the Archean Eon, it really has a pretty profound effects once we get into the Proterozoic Eon, is that you started to have cyanic, cyanobacteria produce oxygen. And we said in the last video that they were producing oxygen, but most of that oxygen was being absorbed by iron in the oceans. But what happens is we enter into the Proterozoic Eon, and Proterozoic Eon it's right over here. I don't know if you can see that. I'll rewrite it. Proterra, Proterozoic. We're now in the Proterozoic Eon. That starts up about 2.5 billion years ago. And Proterozoic comes from the Greek for earlier life. Earlier earlier life and I'm not a Greek scholar so I, I you know any of you Greeks out there forgive me if I'm not getting the translation exactly right but what's really interesting at the about the proterozoic eon is that that oxygen that was being produced by the cyanobacteria and at some point begins to saturate the iron and any other molecule that could have absorbed it before and once it saturates it starts to get released into the atmosphere so the oxygen starts to get released and accumulate in the atmosphere. And we think this happened, this started to happen about 2.4 billion years ago. So 2.4 billion years ago, oxygen begins to accumulate in the atmosphere. And of course, you know, these dates they might be moved around a few hundred million years as we get more and more data. But this is the current understanding of when things happen. And maybe we'll look at the geological record or the fossil record and we'll move these things around in the future. I I could only imagine that fifty years from now or a hundred years from now, if someone's still watching this video, a lot of this might say, hey, you know, we found out later that oxygen started to accumulate in the atmosphere earlier or later, or that eukaryotes occurred earlier or later. But this as far as I can tell is our best current understanding. But 2.4 billion years ago, oxygen begins begins to accumulate, accumulate in the atmosphere. And what's interesting about this is once it accumulates, once it gets kind of a critical uh, amount of oxygen in the atmosphere, and I touched on this in the last video, about 2.3 billion years ago, we have something called the Great Oxygenation Event, sometimes called the Oxygen Catastrophe. And this is right here. They mark it on this right here, 2.3 billion years ago, or 2,300 million years ago, atmosphere becomes oxygen rich. And it's not as oxygen rich as our current atmosphere, but it becomes oxygen rich enough that at least the environment becomes suitable for eukaryotic organisms or eukaryotic cell. Now the other interesting thing, and we might not care so much about it because we needed the oxygen, is that we think that this was actually the greatest extinction event in the history of Earth. That's why it's called the oxygen catastrophe. So this right over here, 2.3 billion years ago, I shouldn't giggle about it. This is a serious matter. It's the greatest, greatest extinction event, extinction event in Earth's history, in history. And I'll do history with a capital H in Earth's, in the history of the Earth. And that's because you know the cyanobacteria is producing all this oxygen, eventually saturates the iron, it accumulates in the air. Once it gets to enough concentration, it begins to actually suffocate. It's poisonous. It's poisonous to most of the other organisms on the planet that were that were anaerobic, that did not need oxygen, that actually found oxygen, that actually found oxygen poisonous. Now, but since we have oxygen, there's two interesting things that happened once that oxygen accumulated, other than uh, causing this mass extinction event. Actually, three interesting things. Two of them are essentially are, are crucial to us eventually showing up on this planet. The first is, is that it became suitable now for eukaryotes to exist. Eukaryotic organisms, remember, these are organisms that have that have nuclear membranes around their DNA. Most eukaryotes have other organelles like mitochondria. They need oxygen. They, they need 
they need oxygen. You can go to the biology playlist. We actually talk about respiration that occurs in the mitochondria. And that's obviously a process that needs oxygen. So one, we have, now that oxygen is in the atmosphere, we're starting to have an environment where eukaryotes could at least exist. And based on the fossil records, and when we look at you know, how the DNA has changed over time, and we'll do multiple videos of that, we think, we think that the first eukaryotes showed up about 2.2 billion years ago. Although there's some debate here. There's some evidence it might have been a little earlier, some evidence it might have been later. I'm sure that number will be refined. But about, you know, give or take a few hundred millions of years, one prokaryote got engulfed by another prokaryote and said, hey, we do pretty well living together. I mean, a lot of the current theory is that mitochondria is actually descendant from the. The current theory is that mitochondria is actually descended from a kind of an ancient prokaryotic cell, an ancient bacteria. It actually has its own DNA. And actually, your mitochondrial DNA is passed down from your mother, and your mother's mother, and your mother's mother, so on and so forth. So it's kind of like another little animal living inside of a larger cell. And we are eukaryotes. We needed this to happen. Our, your, the human body, we're not just one eukaryotic cell. We're made up of trillions. The estimates are 50 to 100 trillion eukaryotes. Eukaryotic cells. So this was a super. These are our ancestors that had to come into being at that time. And once again, all of this is happening inside of the oceans. Now the other interesting thing that happened. Remember, we're being bombarded with UV radiation from the sun. So if you're on the land, so if you're on the land, let me draw the land and the ocean. So here is the ocean, and then here is the land. Here is the land, right over there in yellow, constantly being bombarded with UV radiation. And UV stands for ultraviolet, so I'm drawing it in purple. But it's even more violet than purple. So it's constantly being bombarded by, with ultraviolet radiation from the sun, which is very inhospitable to DNA and to life. And so the only life at this point could occur in the ocean, where it was protected to some degree from the ultraviolet u radiation. The land was just open to it. You were get, Anything on the land would have just gotten irradiated. Its DNA would get mutated. It just would not be able to live. So what happened, and what I guess has to happen, and the reason why we are able to live on land now is that we have an ozone layer. We have an ozone layer up in the upper atmosphere that helps absorb that that blocks most of the UV radiation from the sun. And now that oxygen began to accumulate, we have the oxygen catastrophe. Oxygen accumulates in the atmosphere. Some of that, at, some of that oxygen goes into the upper atmosphere. So we're now in this time period right over here. It goes into the upper atmosphere. It actually re reacts with the UV light to turn into ozone, which then can help actually block the UV light. And I'll do another video maybe on the ozone on the ozone oxygen cycle. So this this oxygen production, it's crucial, one, to having an ozone layer so that eventually life can exist on the land. And it's also crucial because eukaryotic organisms need that oxygen. Now the third thing that happened, this is also a pretty significant event, we believe we believe that that oxygen that started to accumulate in the atmosphere reacted with methane in the atmosphere. So it reacted with methane. And methane is an ozone. It, it, it's, a, uh, not an ozone. it's a greenhouse gas. It helps retain heat in the atmosphere. And once it reacts with the oxygen and starts dropping out of the atmosphere as methane, we believe the Earth cooled down. And it entered its first, and some people believe, its longest snowball period. So that's why they, what they talk about right here on this diagram, the first the first snowball Earth. It's sometimes called the Huronic glaciation. And that happened because we weren't able to retain our heat, if, if that theory is correct. And so the whole, the, as the theory goes, the whole Earth essentially just iced over. So as we kind of, as we go through the Proterozoic uh, eon, I guess the, 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 the big markers of it is it's the first time that we now have an oxygen-rich atmosphere. It's the first time that eukaryotes are uh, uh, can now come into existence because they they have they now have oxygen that to I guess we could say breathe. And the other big thing is now this is where the ozone forms. So this kind of sets the stage for in the next eon for animals or or living things to eventually get on to the land, and we'll talk about that in the next video.